Hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture in the topic of STEMI and today we are asking ourselves a very common question that's asked in the ER which is, is it STEMI or early reverberization pattern? First of all, our ILOs are to understand the characteristic ECG features of early reverberization and how to differentiate STEMI from early reverberization pattern ECG when the patient has ST signal elevation. First of all, regarding the early reparization pattern, it is characterized by widespread ST elevation that gives the appearance of pericarditis or STEMI and is nearly present in 10 to 15% of patients presenting with chest pain. That's why it represents a diagnostic challenge when a patient presents with this pattern in this ECG because it may give a confusion that this patient may have ST elevation myocardial like infarction. Of course, we know the pattern of early repairization, which has another common term, which is the early type of pattern. Early type of pattern is like a morphological description of this pattern as it describes the ST segment that it is taking up early from the complex, leading to that the J point is not isoelectric and is elevated above the baseline. So, early repairization pattern is like an etiological description of this pattern as it is described as an abnormality in the phase of repairization of the ventricle whereas early tip-off is a morphological description. Another name is benign early reparization pattern, abbreviated as BER, which is common to be used in literature in some cases, but I prefer to use the term of early reparization pattern, and I will tell you why at the end of this lecture. Let's now see what are the criteria for early reparization pattern. First criterion is the widespread concave ST elevation most common in the chest leads. Although it sometimes may appear in inferior leads or lateral leads, but usually it is prominent in the chest leads. And first, it is very important to say that usually the ST segment is concave, ST elevation, the same appearance of the smiley face. And of course, it is an important criteria that is very characteristic for early repolarization as well as pericarditis. And it may help to differentiate it from STEMI, but of course, don't depend solely on this feature because some patients with STEMI may show concave ST elevation. Let's see this ECG here, we can see widespread ST elevation from V3 to V6 and also it may involve slightly V2, AVF and slightly AV1. So here the ST elevation extends to inferior leads and slightly to the lateral leads. Let's see the second criterion which is the notching at the J point which is sometimes called in literature as a fish hook pattern. Here as we can see that the J point is notched, not smooth transition from the complex to the ST segment as we see in patient with STEMI. So whenever you see this characteristic criterion, it may help to distinguish this ECG as early reverberization pattern. Another criterion is the prominent asymmetrical T waves that are concordant with the QRS complex as both have the same axis. So you would not see T wave inversion by phasic T wave or hyperacute T wave with patient with early reverberization pattern. I would see concordant asymmetrical T wave and or will not be hyperacute, it will usually show normal amplitude as compared to the normal ECG. Another criterion is that the magnitude of ST elevation is less than 25% of T wave amplitude. That means that the ST elevation is not very prominent in patients early repolarization, usually less than the quarter of the T wave amplitude. And we use this criterion in order to differentiate early repolarization pattern from very carditis. Also, the ST elevation is usually less than 2 mm in the precordial leads and less than 0.5 mm in the limb lead. This means that the ST elevation is more prominent as regarding magnitude in precordial lead and also it is more common to be seen in the precordial lead. So, usually, the early polarization is more prominent in chest lead rather than limb leads. Also, there is no reciprocal ST depression to such as the STEMI except in AVR. As we can see here, that AVR shows ST depression, slightly similar to the macro signs that appear in pericarditis. And so, you will not see the reciprocal ST depression as in STEMI patient, this will help you to exclude STEMI, but AVR may show ST depression. Also, the ST changes are relatively stable over time, there are no dynamic change in serial ECGs in patients with early repolarization pattern. Usually in STEMI, dynamic change occur over hours today, Whereas in pericarditis over days to weeks, as we learned before, in the lecture of STEMI and lecture of STEMI versus pericarditis, but in early repolarization pattern, they are stable and usually static. However, they usually disappear with tachycardia and on stress ECG. So if we see this example here, this is a patient who were undergoing treadmill test, 
and his resting ECG showed early repolarization pattern prominent in his 3, 4, 5, and 6, and also in the inferior leads. And then, with the tachycardia, as he started to have the treadmill exercise, the heart rate accelerated into the disappearance of the early repolarization pattern, and also here with the peak exercise, the early repolarization pattern nearly disappeared with the acceleration of the heart rate. So in serial ECGs, normally it is usually the same, but with acceleration of heart rate, it usually disappears. After we discussed the characteristic feature of early repolarization pattern, let's now make a comparison between STEMI and early repolarization in order to be able to differentiate these ECG features in the ER in order to decide whether this patient has a STEMI or just early repolarization pattern. First of all, in STEMI, the ST elevation is usually localized to a specific territory, whereas an early repolarization pattern usually is a precordial lead but may affect also the intralateral lead, so it is not restricted to a certain territory as in STEMI. Also in STEMI, the ST elevation is associated with the reciprocal ST depression in the opposing lead. We know what, the, for example, if your STEMI has the reciprocal ST depression in the lateral lead, whereas an early repolarization pattern has no reciprocal ST depression except in EVR, as we have seen in the last ECG. In STEMI, usually you can see hyperactivity wave, or biphasic T wave, or inverted T wave according to the time when the patient presented to us in the ER whereas an early repolarization pattern does concordant asymmetrical T wave with normal amplitude. Usually in STEMI we can see dynamic change over hours to days, whereas an early repolarization pattern is usually static when you compare serial ECGs to the same, even after years it will be the same. In STEMI there is no notched J point, whereas an early repolarization is a characteristic feature to see notched J point, which is a fish hook. Pattern. Let's for example see this ECG here. This patient has a ST elevation in the precordial lead, but we can see that the patients have reciprocal ST depression in the impure leads. The T waves are hyper acute. The ST elevation is restricted to the anthracyclic precordial lead from the 1, 2, 3, and slightly in the 4. So here we are speaking about anthracyclic ST. Of course, it is not every repolarization pattern as I have seen. In the previous ECG that we saw in the criteria of early repolarization pattern. Let's now make another comparison of early repolarization pattern with pericarditis. Of course, we remembered from the last lecture about STEMI versus pericarditis that in pericarditis versus early repolarization, the ratio of ST elevation to the T wave is very important to characterize which one of them is the diagnosis. So, for example, if the ratio is more than 0.25, Mostly it's pericarditis, its ratio is less than 0.25, mostly it is early repolarization pattern, and this means that the ST elevation magnitude is higher in patients with pericarditis. Another differentiation is PR depression, which is a characteristic feature in patients with pericarditis, where it is not present in a repolarization pattern. Also, the more diffuse ST elevation in pericarditis involving the precordial leads and prolateral leads, which is, of course, more diffuse than the early repolarization pattern, in which the ST elevation is usually limited to the precordial leads. Another differentiation is that in pericarditis there are usually dynamic change over days to weeks, whereas in early repolarization it is usually static. Let's see this ECG example here for pericarditis. We can see that this diffuse ST elevation, which is concave ST elevation in precordial lead and prolateral lead, and ST depression, which is a marked sign in EPR. We can see clearly here that the ST elevation magnitude is relatively higher than we can see in early repolarization without notching in the T point. And here, if we compare the ratio of ST elevation to the T wave amplitude, it would be more than 0.25. And of course, we can see clearly the PR depression. If we compare it to the baseline TP segment, we can see clearly that the PR segment is depressed. So here we are speaking about precarditis rather than early repolarization pattern. If I am still in doubt, what can I do? I cannot decide whether it is a STEMI or an early repolarization pattern. In this case, it is a STEMI until proved as wild, and in this case, you need to go for chronography to exclude. So, if you cannot decide clearly and safely that this patient is just early repolarization, go for chronography. Our simple rule: patient with early repolarization pattern misdiagnosed as a STEMI. The only hazard that he had an unnecessary invasive angiography which showed normal risk. But of course, if it is the opposite and patient with a STEMI misdiagnosed as early depolarization pattern, 
you can see that it has a risk of completed mitotic infarction with all the possible post eye complications like a rhythmic complication, mechanical complication, risk of long standing with dysfunction, and of course, risk of mortality. Regarding the, this term of benign early reprisation pattern, the question is is it really benign? The answer to this question will come in this upcoming lecture regarding the J wave syndromes. Unfortunately, early reprisation pattern is not always benign. It may be malignant, may lead to signal, may lead to sudden cardiac death in some cases. That's why there is a term called early reprisation syndrome. That's why I prefer to use the term early reprisation pattern throughout the lecture because what you can see in the ECG is just early reprisation pattern. Is it a syndrome or not? Is it benign? Is it malignant? You cannot decide it just from ECG. It's decided by history taking. And of course, you are answering this question in this upcoming. So we understood today the characteristic ECG features of early reprisation pattern and how to differentiate it from STEMI. And our take home message today that early reprisation pattern is a commonly seen ECG features in our practice that have characteristic ECG features to differentiate it from STEMI and pleuritis but it is not always easy to be honest with you and in some cases you may be still in doubt and deal with the patient finally and to me before you cannot decide clearly. Thank you so much for your watching.